<laughs> Let me get some throat clearing on this. <coughs> get some cough tone, please. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to some more thrilling first round action of Detective Force. Uh, Christina and I have both come down ill. Uh, so the Veronica Mars, uh, John McClane debate will be taking place in quarantine specifically because nobody wanted to volunteer to sit in between us for, uh, 12 to 15 minutes. Anyway, all that to say, on my left, Christina will be debating for Veronica Mars. She's awesome. And currently standing right here where I'm standing, I will be debating for John McClane. He's awesome. We're going to do our best to stay with the original format. Two minutes for opening arguments, one minute for rebuttal, and then maybe we'll talk to each other at the end, depending on how the first part of it goes. The coin is such a gentleman, he decided to let Christina go first. Uh, so Christina, Veronica Mars, take it away. Veronica Mars is a great detective, and anyone who thinks otherwise is going to be quickly corrected by means of taser, if they're lucky. Even though she's only 5'1", tiny and blonde, She's really great. A lot of people underestimate her due to her stature at their own peril. She knows everybody's secrets and she can destroy you. Uh, she brings her own brand of justice to her tiny town of Neptune, California, and occasionally the greater Southern California area. But she's not, okay, so she's not always above board, but it's, she's always on the side of what's right. Uh, she's a true friend to her friends and a deadly enemy to her enemies, or at least a very, uh, dangerous enemy to her enemies. Before she was 20, she caught multiple murderers and a serial rapist and like a dog napper and all sorts of other crazy criminals. And all this was the reason she received her private detective's license when she was 18 years old. That is pretty impressive, people. In contrast, my opponent, John McClane, is a mediocre detective at best. And remember, this is Detective Wars. John McClane really only gets clues when they literally drop out of the sky, like literally drop out of the sky or are actually handed to him by the bad guys. When he needs to engage in some deductive reasoning, he needs a surly electrician from Harlem to help him out in uh, Die Hard with a Vengeance. Veronica doesn't need help like that. She's independent. She doesn't need help like that. She doesn't get help like that. She has to go out and seek her own clues, occasionally putting herself or her reputation in danger. She often has to make tough choices, like choosing between a promising corporate law career and going to back to her hometown to battle what's right. But the, the draw of being a detective, it's in her blood. It's what she's meant to do. It's the best thing for her. So I'm actually gonna go way back and pull a quote from Dashiell Hammett, the guy who created Sam Spade, who should probably have been on this bracket, could have belonged on this bracket very well. Uh, but listen to how Hammett de describes a perfect detective. He doesn't want to be an erud er erudite solver of riddles. He wants to be a hard and shifty fellow, able to take care of himself in any situation, able to get the best of anybody he comes in contact with. And that describes Lieutenant Detective John McClane to a T. For McClane, getting the best of anybody he comes in contact with includes uh, stylish German fellows who are attempting to rob Nakatomi Plaza and their brothers two movies later. That includes some badass like mercenary commandos at Dulles Airport. It includes a pissed off super hacker and it also includes some version of Russian bad guys. I'm really not sure what he was doing in uh, Live A Good Day to Die Hard, uh, but you know, whatever, that's fine. He kicked their ass. <clears throat> the best part about McLean is that he's always a reluctant hero as well. He's just a guy who got invited to a Christmas party by mistake. Uh, but when the shit hits the fan at that Christmas party, there's nobody else on this bracket that I would rather have on the case than John McLean. He foils these enormous plots that highly sophisticated professional criminals have spent years planning, and he does it with this blue collar work ethic. What makes makes John McClane the best isn't anything flashy. It's the real world street smarts <clears throat> that wins every time. Excuse me. It's figuring out what Hans Gruber was doing up on the roof in time to go kick some ballet dancer's ass and then save everybody's life. It's figuring out that Simon Groomer is actually there to rob the Federal Reserve. McClane is a combination of a guy who you won't ever pull a fast one on, but he's a guy who can figure out what your game is and a guy who won't stop coming at you until he's won. He can do the detective work Time. and he's gonna kick your ass. Everything you said about John McClane that makes a great detective could apply to Veronica Mars as well. 
she isn't she's not an erudite gentleman to be sure she's not afraid of getting her hands dirty she always does what needs to be done the one thing john mcclain has on veronica mars and everyone else on his bracket on this bracket is his superhero like indestructibility and i'll, I'll grant that you know john mcclain could totally take veronica mars in a fight but i'm sure he wouldn't because he's a gentleman on the other hand veronica has emotional indestructibility people come at her with sex tapes, they don't believe her rape allegations, they'll attack her where it hurts the most, and yet she comes out ahead. And isn't that more impressive than being able to be blown up four times and come out kicking? Also, let's just look at the arc of John McClane. Veronica Mars rose from the ashes to get her movie. In the most recent movie, John McClane was basically playing sidekick to Jai <laughs> Courtney. Don't throw Jai Courtney at me, all right? Jai Courtney got his ass bailed out by John McClane. Granted, his dad, John McClane, Jai, Jai Courtney wouldn't have ever been there if he hadn't learned from his dad about how to be, uh, you know, a good, he was, what was he, CIA? Look, I don't even remember. I didn't get through that movie. I was on a plane. I still didn't even get through that movie. McClane is sort of a bull in a china shop of this bracket. I, I fully acknowledge that. But the, the point is that he takes all of the information that he gets from these people. He's got, a, he's got an amazing nose for it, right? Like in Die Hard 2, he sees a guy being shifty, wandering back into the, to the baggage handling area. He's like, that guy ain't right. And he uncovers like the whole thing. And these plots that he uncovers, I cannot stress enough, these plots that he uncovers and that he foils are years in the making. And you want to talk about tough choices and em emotional? Like, the guy gave up. He's been a bad father and a bad uh, husband because he's so dedicated to his job, because he's so dedicated to being a detective. Even in Die Hard with a Vengeance, hangs up on his wife again. You want to talk about tough choices? That's a tough choice. All right, so free form discussion. I guess it's your turn to start because oh, you've been yeah. going first. Um, I'll start if you want me to start. Yeah, go ahead and start. Look, I, you know, the thing about the Veronica Mars movie is, uh, to me, like, the the mystery that she solved in there was more or less an episode of Law and Order. Like, yeah, some people killed some folks nine years ago, and then they were covering it up, and then now somebody was going to threaten to out everybody, and so that's why they got killed. Like, that's half I know what you did last summer and half take your pick SVU episode. I mean, put that up there with Hans Gruber's plot, figuring out how to wrong. Hans Gruber said what he was doing right off the bat. I want money. No, no but, well, not to, not no, to, McClane, to, but to, like to the double Nakatomi. cross at the end, the double cross at the end, and by the way, Takagi, not Nakatomi. The Na Nakatomi was the name of the building. Takagi was the name of the man, yeah, right. please. Um, I but... rewatched the movie while in this state. <laughs> the point is, like, he puts all, he does this in every movie. He, he picks up all of these pieces, <coughs> puts them all together, and then sees the big picture. And that's what enables him to realize what Hans was doing up on the roof with the explosives, what Double Cross was about, what was about to play out with blowing up the roof and sifting through the rubbles, and we'll be on the beach earning 20%. He figures all that out just in time to then have the brute force enough to beat up ballet dancer guy, uh, Carl. Uh, and then get back up to the roof, save the day, and then still save his wife. He's doing all of this to rescue his wife. You want to talk about Veronica Mars is the only one that's got like tough emotional stuff going on. He's got to save his wife. Yeah, no, I'll give you that John McClane can put pieces together, but he does not have the skills to seek out those pieces. He, in Die Hard 2, a gun with loaded with blanks, literally drops from the sky in front of him, and that's how he realizes that the military unit is on the side of the terrorists. Well, what in other Die clue Hard 3, do you want? The bad guy tosses him the a pill bottle with his location written on the bottom. Right. That's the clue, and he's, he's, okay, let's go to Canada and blow up his helicopter. Like, that's, I don't understand why that's not, like, okay. he sees that clue, he interprets that clue, those guys are bad. I don't understand what well, the deal is here's with Here's the thing. John McClane does not have the full arsenal of a detective at his disposal because he sucks at technology. Veronica is awesome with technology. She can hack your Wi-Fi. She can run a search on your... He doesn't even... He's, he was scared of fax machines I would in Die argue, Hard 2. I would fax argue machines. that Live Free or Die Hard proved that you don't need to be really good at technology to get the job done. Well, you because need Justin Long to come along with you. he's fighting technology. Yeah, who cares? He got some help. Sherlock's got Watson. Veronica Mars has got and Weevil or whatever. <laughs> like, everybody's got people that help out. <laughs> Look, end of the day, John McClane is a very underrated detective. If you go back and watch Die Hard with a Vengeance, when they're trying to figure out who this Simon is that's calling and they like going through his old cases to talk about, 
you know, he immediately knows, no, it's not that guy. No, it can't be that guy. There's like, oh, that guy was just a, uh, he was a, a stupid businessman that kidnapped his partner's daughter. Like, he's not a psycho that, that he's not the guy that we're looking for. Like, he has a back, a, a back story of being a successful detective. In spite of all his personal flaws, uh, Cobb, Inspector Cobb, knows that he's, he's worth a damn, even though he's got all these personal, personal flaws. But he's a great detective and they need him and he gets the job done. He's five for five. Great policeman, a good man, and a pretty good detective. But he's not an excellent detective the way Veronica Mars is. She is re relentless in solving cases even when there is no, nothing to go on. John McClane, he gets briefs from the FBI or the CIA at some point in every movie, telling oh. him more or less who the bad guy is. And that's why I would say Veronica Mars should emerge victorious in this round. Of I the just brackets. don't understand how you can hold the fact that like he receives clues from people and can interpret those clues and save the day. Why? I'm, why is that? A, why are you holding that against him? I'm just saying that. that he's not as good. He's not as good as deductive reasoning or finding out things for himself. And all I'm saying is when the stakes are super high, like the financial stability of the West high, I'm taking John McClane every day. Okay, that's probably enough for us. We need to go sit down for a little bit. Let us know down in the comments below. There's a comment down there that says like this if John McLean wins. And there's a comment that says like this if Veronica Mars wins. Let us know what you think. Also go check out our other tournament going on right now. It's Rorschach versus Mark Gunderson. Vote that one up. Vote them all up. Come back next week for more Detective Wars. Thumbs up for Cody Coster. Yeah, thumbs up for just asleep, honestly, <laughs> at this point. <clears throat> hey, oh, by the way, my voice is totally gone. Did you notice that? <laughs>